What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create graphical user interfaces with Python and Kinter. Right, in the last video, we kind of looked at SQLite database stuff with Python a little bit. In this video, I want to take a turn and talk about graphical user interfaces, sort of like Windows desktop looking programs that you can build with Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so first off, there are lots of different options for creating graphical user interfaces with Python. Now, up until now, we've been using the command prompt running our programs, the terminal running our programs there, getting the input and outputs and all the stuff there. And that's fine for a lot of things, but sometimes you just want a graphical program that people can use. So, you know, by that I mean like, like this thing right here, this is a graphical program. It has these buttons at the top, you know, we can minimize, we can maximize, we can resize it. It's, it's graphical, it's a Windows type program. And Python actually makes it fairly simple to create those types of programs. Now there are lots of different options of things, uh, modules and, and different programs you can use to create Windows desktop graphical user interfaces with Python. But the one I like is called tkinter or kinter as it's, I think it's pronounced. And it actually comes with Python. It's already installed, it's already ready to go. You just have to reference it. So in this video, I'm gonna spend a few minutes just showing you the very, very, very absolute basics. So you can get a quick sort of graphical user interface up and running. It'll have some boxes that you can type stuff into. It'll have some buttons and it'll do just some very, very basic stuff. Now I could literally talk for hours on this and I actually have a playlist here on YouTube that goes into tkinter. It's just a tkinter playlist. I'll put the link in the description below. There's 24, 25 videos. So if you're interested in this, you can really watch those and get an in-depth sort of, uh, you know, uh, feel for all this stuff, learn it, you know, from the ground up. In this video, I just want to make you aware of what's available and sort of uh, make you hopefully find some interest in this. So uh, let's pull up our hello.py file that we've been working on. And I deleted all that database stuff that we did in the last video. To use Kinter or tkinter, however you want to call it, just at the top, we want to call from tkinter import everything. Star means everything. And that's all you have to do. Like I said, Kinter is already installed with Python. It comes with Python. So you just have to reference it like this and it's good to go. So the first thing we need to do is create a window. And you know, that's the, the box that this is gonna hold all this stuff. And I'm just gonna call it root, just create a variable, call it whatever you want. But root's sort of the common, it's the root window. And we call TK, oops, I cannot type today. It is Friday in Vegas, beautiful day out. <laughs> so the typos will be high. So there we go, we create this and we wanna give this a title. So like up here at the top of this sublime thing, you see this sublime text unregistered, that's the title of this little app. So we wanna give our app a title. So we just call root.title and set that, well, it's a function. So um, I don't know, codemy.com, learn to code, all right? And we can say what size we want this to be by calling root.geometry, I spell it right, yeah. And then passing in the dimensions. So let's just call this, I don't know, 400 by 600, make a little sort of rectangle looking thing. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now, in order to actually make this thing run, we need to call root.mainloop. So what's going on here is the program is continually running a loop and that's how it tells if you do something. So if you move your mouse across the screen, what's going on here is this loop is looping and every time you make a bit of a move, it's looped around and it sees that your cursor is in a different position and then it keeps looping and as you move your cursor, it's looping, looping, looping and it's taking like a snapshot of what's going on every you know millisecond or something. So yeah, it's a continual loop that's the main loop of the program. And that's how just graphical user interfaces generally work, no matter what. So, all right, so this is the stuff we have. Now, inside of here, we can create 
uh, whatever we want. So let's start out with by creating uh, a label. Label? Yeah, let's create a label. So to do a thing is always a two step process. You create the thing and then you put the thing on the screen. So there, Tkinter runs off of things called widgets and everything is a widget. So you can have a label widget, you can have a button widget, you can have a entry box widget, you can have, you know, everything's a widget. So uh, to create a widget, we just create any type of variable, name it anything you want. So I'm gonna call this my label and you set that equal to a label. That's the widget. And inside of here, we need to tell it where this needs to go. Well, we only have one window at this point. It's called our root window. And now we can say what kind of text. And let's say enter your first name, right? So that's step one, we've created the label. Now we need to put the label on the screen. And to do that, uh, there's a couple of different ways, but I'm gonna use something called pack. We just wanna pack this on the screen. And what that does is it puts it in the very first spot. Now you can also do grid, and with the grid, you have to tell exactly where to go. So you say like, put it in row one, column one, or row four, column six, or whatever. And you think of a grid system of rows and columns on your thing. A little bit more advanced, I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. If you're interested, check my playlist and there's a video on the grid system. So, all right, so that is that. Now let's save this and let's just run it real quick, just to see. So let's go Python, hello.py, and this thing pops up and here's our window. It has the buttons up here that work. You know, you can minimize them and, and maximize them. You can close it. Here's our little label. It says enter your first name. The thing is 400 by 600. So it's, you know, pretty big. We can maybe change that to 400 by 400. It's probably better, but whatever. And it has this little default icon. You can put your own icon in there very easily. I'm not gonna bother doing that in this video. And here at the top, it says codeme.com, learn to code. That's our title that we, we created. And ah, all right, so coming right along and just that easy, we've got a Windows program, desktop program. Boom, it just works. That is very, very cool. So now let's create a uh, sort of a text box so we can enter our name. So I'm gonna call this my text box. And this is what's called an entry. We're making an entry. I don't know why they call it that. I would call it text box, but I didn't create Kinter. So, <laughs> and again, we need to tell it where we wanna put it in root. And how big do we want this? I'm gonna say width equals 30. Now it's a text box, so we don't have to put any text in it. We'll actually type that in, but you know, like up here we put enter your first name. We don't have to do that. Uh, so again, two-step process, my text box dot pack. All right, so let's save this and run it, see what that looked like. And you see enter your first name and you've got, eh, pretty cool. So now let's create a button. So again, just call it whatever you want. I'll call it my button, set that equal to a button. And buttons are pretty much the same as labels. You just tell it where root and give it a text, Oops, text. And then, uh, I don't know, submit, whatever. And that'll work. Now, again, two-step process, my button dot pack. And it packs it onto the screen. All right, so let's save this and run it again just to see what we got. And, you know, we could type some stuff in, click the button. The button doesn't actually do anything yet because we haven't told it to do anything yet, but it, it's on there and it, it looks okay. All right, so now how do we make this thing do something? Well, we can come down here when we've created the button and slap a comma on there and then give it a command and set this command equal to, we need to name a function that we need to then create. So let's call this function hello, I don't know. And then up here at the top of our program, let's create that function. So define hello. And then inside of here, we just need to say what we wanna do. So let's create another label. Let's call this um, hello underscore label and set that equal to a label and it needs to be in root and the text should be what? Hello, and let's concatenate. Oops. Now this entry box, whatever was written into that, my text box, we can get that by calling the get function. So we just slap this my text box in, text box in there, dot get, and that's a function. 
And that should work. Now again, two step process for everything. Hello underscore label dot hack. Hack this on the screen. And uh, that might just work. So when we press this button, it's basically saying, hey, run this hello function. And then here's the hello function. In the hello function, we're going to create a new label and say hello, and then just whatever was written in this uh, text box thing here. So let's save this and run it, see if this worked. Uh oh, invalid syntax. Oh, <laughs> I told you it was Friday. There we go. All right. Hello, uh, Pi. Enter your first name. My name is John. Submit. Hello, John. There you go. So <laughs> it's very, very basic program. And we're really not doing much of anything in here. I can click, keep clicking this if we want to type in elder. Hello, John Elder, whatever you like, it just keeps spitting it onto the screen. So not a very sophisticated program, obviously, but check this out. How many lines of code from 15 to 31? Basically, that's like 16 lines of code, we have a program, it's graphical. It's an actual Windows program and it has stuff. It's got a label and a text box and a button that actually works. And it's very, very cool. So I love Kenter. I think this is a lot of fun. Like I said, if you want to learn more of this, I'm not going to do any more Kenter stuff in this particular Python course. But if you want to learn more, I have a whole course on it, a Kenter playlist on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below or just go to my YouTube channel and search, you know, click the little playlist button. It's probably one of the first couple listed. And like I said, there's 24, 25, something like that uh, videos there. And I'm continuing to add more videos over time to that. So uh, check it out if you're interested. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.